Hello everybody, this is the Centralized Dave with Curtis. Hello Curtis. Hi David. And we're back yet again with another podcast. Uh, it's two of us and the next time we be- I believe Isabel is going to be join- uh, joining us again. Um, today we have a pretty volatile market moves, I would say. Um, so we're going to talk about that. So it's definitely the right time to do the podcast. So, um, Curtis, uh, you, you always start with the update on the Bitcoin, so I suppose let's go. Yeah. Okay. So stocks rallied this week, Monday to Friday. Um, the S&P was up from around uh, up to 3,700 up to about 3,900. And you can see crypto has also rallied a bit. Um, Bitcoin's at 20,800. Ethereum is at over 1,600, which is a doubling from the low. Right, I think it hit 800 at the low. Uh, so we're up nine. Well, eight. just below 900. It is okay. not yet doubled, but it's so getting almost uh, quite nine. impressive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the theme all year we've been talking about is that stocks holding their bottom means crypto holds its bottom. It seems to be the case. Still, um, now I think um, for anyone looking to really get the confirmation that we've got a bottom, let's just talk about Bitcoin. I think we need to get around above that around 22.5 and hold it for a few months. I mean, we need to, I don't think kicking around here is very encouraging still, you know, you know, 19,000, 20,000, 21,000, there's still, it doesn't, it's not that great. Um, even though we've been here by three months, uh, for around three months since the low at 17.5, for me personally, I'd like to see some strength around maybe 22,000, 23,000, and then for it to hold for maybe three or four weeks uh, before I would personally be confident to um, get back in with more more coins, you know. What about you? So I would like to add that the most important level is going to be 24,000. So first of all, my uh, ascending wedge and breaking down has been invalidated. So I was wrong at that. Uh, I've been talking about it September and October that it should go down to at least 15K and it could have been just a week, but it never happened. So I already congratulated you in October, Curtis, so I can congratulate you again uh, here on on, uh, on the podcast for your bottom for this, for your bottom call call. For your bottom call that you made in june uh you literally call this bottom uh back then uh so congratulations it's uh, holding on way longer than even i think you thought at the time when you were calling for it and right, me right including now the very important level is going to be 24k which is at the moment the 200 moving average so uh, now whether this is going to bounce from the 24k on the first tange, I do not know. Uh, but I think that there is also even reasonable chance that it's going to even break through and only then come back to it. So maybe we will even see like 25k not that far into the future, I would say. For the people to get confident, it has to stay above it. On weekly, it has to close on the line. Like going above it, Closing one above and then coming back down and closing one on the line, it's sometimes the most convincing. Right. So, and so, yeah. And just for your listeners, so the idea is that when you're looking at a bottom in a market, there's sort of two um, ways that that bottom can resolve. One is on a very sharp price that just spikes way down. And the other one is over a length of time, maybe not such a deep price fall but it consolidates over three to six months, for example. So um, 17.6 was the bottom, but we've also had three months at around 19,000, right? Mm -hmm. And the longer that goes, the more likelihood that that was the bottom at 17.6 for this entire cycle. Um, So if it gets above 22.24, that's great. I think we also needed to stay there for a week or two or three, maybe even a month or two. Maybe we need to stay above 22 until December before I feel comfortable uh, to invest some new money. You've mentioned S&P 500. So S&P 500, uh, yes, just like you said, um, 
so we had a new yearly low in October at the start of October did not touch my blue line but it was genuinely f close it was like $90 close so not that far off to be honest and it literally actually the, the 200 moving average literally held here on S&P 500 like and this is this is like almost close on the line it's not perfect close on the line but very close very very uh, 35 close, 88, 36. Close. yeah 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 so that was somewhat of a bullish confirmation and look back it goes back to 2008 except for the two, 2020 there's only one anomaly that 200 week moving average on the s p goes back to 2008. Uh, i would like to correct you just a little bit that there was one exception one exceptional okay. candle and interestingly enough it then held anyway if anyway you zoom back you get just get a picture of what i'm saying yeah Yes, this was a huge, uh, uh, you yeah. know, bearish. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, last week was very good. It was continuation from the week before that. Um, so we've had two weeks of green candles um, and we're above 3,900 now. Um, Q3 earnings came out uh, more. We had tech this week. Um, Amazon, very bad. Apple was very mm -hmm. good. Facebook, very bad. Tesla was good, etc. So. Um, overall, maybe a B or B minus score on Q3 earnings. Mm -hmm. I think at least half the companies beat the estimates. Um, so that's that's why we've had this this rally. And now DXY is important to mention. Uh, I made a call a month ago, I think a few podcasts ago, uh, at the end of September when stuff was looking like really worrying. I was very worried because my fault line means that this is my point of, of kind of break up, breakdown like when I have to if we get a monthly op, uh, monthly open and a close above my fault line I'm gonna have to start worrying that the dollar turn on a macro scale turn bullish versus other fiat currencies because this is the basket of uh, fiat currencies right DXY and I made a call that the next monthly candle is going to be red. And I think this is going to be the case. It's still one day and 15 hours until this candle closes. But it's reasonable, reasonable chance. It's likely at this point that it, it is indeed going to be red this month's candle. And mm -hmm. I can likelihood follow with the call for the next month. I would like to call that the next month again is going to be a red candle for DXY. Right which is good for gold. It's good for and Bitcoin. Would be, it's good would for be great for everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. In the most recent, this week, there was, a, I think it was a product. No, it was the PCE. So there was some indication inflation is falling a bit. Um, something came out on Friday. I forget what it was. Um, yeah, the price in, PCE price index, um, which is not very well known, but it came out a little bit lower. Um, so it's consumer goods in the U.S. So we're getting little glimpses that inflation might be going down. Um, and then, of course, all of the incoming bad economy news um, is going to put downward pressure on inflation. So um, rate hikes, right? Rate hikes take around 12 to 18 months to really impact the economy, right? Mm -hmm. If, you, if I, uh, There's a time lag of about a year for the rate hikes to affect the real economy. And so I think you're probably gonna see that in the early 2023, that the, the actual impact on the average person in terms of what the rate hikes did, uh, that's yeah, where you're- Yeah, gonna, I follow yeah. you, I follow uh, you, although, right. yep. And so, so when we just got Q3 earnings, right? Because companies are still earning off of the cash in the economy over the last year, right? So we're not really seeing, uh, there's a good chance that earnings will be lower next year for companies in Q1, Q2 than right now. Um, that doesn't mean it's true, but um, it could be, right? So there's some lead time there um, on the the rates starting to bite in the US economy. The, the investors started selling off stocks as interest rates were rising, knowing that the pain is coming down the road, whether that's six months, nine months, 12 months away. And now that they see 
uh, the Fed has probably risen ra raised rates as much as they can, that's when stocks start to turn around. Yeah, it we've makes always sense. thought that. Yeah, yes, we've, it makes yeah. sense. All right. Would you like to now follow with your topic? Are we yeah, seeing so a soft exactly. landing? So you, can you share that document? So, um, uh, so my take this week, and you know, well, I've been talking about this for several months, but um, I think the least popular opinion this year, maybe you agree or disagree, David, to me, there was three scenarios this year. One is the Fed is going to raise rates and destroy everything, <laughs> right? They're going to cause a cascading uh, disaster. And they're going to break something. That's yeah, what you mean. right. The other was, no, they're going to pivot and things are going to rally, right? So the Fed mm -hmm. is not going to be as hawkish. And as soon as there's a little problem, the Fed will stop raising rates and you'll see a boom. Those are the two camps, right? Those One of those two. But there's a third one, and that was the least popular of all of them, is the idea of a soft landing. What that means is, uh, no, the Fed is not going to pivot. The Fed will keep raising rates, but the economy can handle it. And you will see earnings and unemployment low and things will be okay. And that's what you'd call a soft landing. That's been the least popular opinion, I think, uh, this year. And I think that could be what's happening right now is the data is saying we are getting a soft landing. Okay, what do I mean by that? If you look at the, the sheet I've got here. So we know that the Fed's raising rates. It's going to be 4% to 5% soon. Um, they're probably not going to pivot. They're not going to cut rates. They might hold at 5% but they're not saying that yet. Um, the thing is that's already priced into evaluations. Uh, the unemployment rate is still low at 3.5%. Uh, last week we had core, uh, Q3 GDP growth of 2.6%, so the economy grew. Q3 earnings were about a B grade, meaning some companies beat estimates, some didn't, but Q3 earnings were fine. Um, housing, I read an article today, there's a housing shortage <laughs> okay, that's not when housing prices crash. So builders like are that. starting to slow their building because mortgage rates are too high. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you're going to have more shortage. Well, you don't have housing prices crash in a shortage typically. So indeed, mortgage rates are rising, which puts downward pressure on housing because it's more expensive to service the mortgage. But you don't have enough supply on the market. And so the housing crash is not happening and not yet. OK, um, yeah. we did have Credit Suisse restructured this week, so that was not fake news. Um, they had to bring in some Saudi investors. And so that maybe is the first thing that's broken. Right. But the other banks are reporting profits. So we have not had bank failures. We haven't had anything break. So um, now that doesn't mean it can't happen tomorrow morning, but um, you're seeing a bit of a soft landing. You're seeing rates rising and the US economy holding fine. We're not having job losses. We're not having housing crashes, no bank failures, except for Credit Suisse. Um, a little bit of panic with the UK Bank of England pensions. There's little signs, but nothing's broken yet. We see DXY coming down, okay, which is mm -hmm. gonna add some support, that'll be good. So yeah, that's, that's the idea. I, I'm not saying this will continue even from tomorrow, but there seems to be a soft landing happening. I have bolded the sentence that I couldn't agree more with. And this is also a sentence worth to repeat and over, right, over, yeah. over and over. Asset As prices are not the real economy and they're not the same thing. Asset prices frequency have risen while the economy is in a recession and the real economy is bad. So, And that's what I'm trying to bridge with 2023 because I think people need to look at both and they need to realize that yes, there's a lot of pain coming, to real people. There will be job losses, earnings will fall, companies will suffer, there will be tightening, but that doesn't mean, as, you know, the average person doesn't realize that they're shocked to see the stock market taking off. And it's because of this gap between the forward-looking aspect of investments and okay. what risk on risk off mean. Without speaking about 2023, we can already uh, conclude that the prices of the assets is going to perhaps depend on what's going to be happening in 2024. 
But this is, yeah, let's leave this for Christmas talk. But yeah, I generally agree. Uh, one thing that I would probably not fully agree at the moment is that the Fiat brand name has been permanently damaged. Maybe the Fiat brand name overall, but then I would include US dollars. Also, my fat line is about agreement to this. Unless we don't break this my fat line, I, I'm still saying the US dollar is in the uh, macro uh, bearish. Even so you would include other, US dollar in that sentence, is I that right? Include, I would include US dollar in that sentence. So you would say all, all fiat, <laughs> with no exception. All exceptions. fiat has been permanently yeah. damaged. I would agree with that. I can I can add US dollar in there, yeah. But um, I very yeah, I would agree that all all fiat has been debunked. Yeah, this is just when I look at this as a macro chart. This was just uh, it was just always coming. The retest of this was always coming, and it is happening right now. So that's why I disagree with this because on the macro scale, it was just like this was always coming. So and after that, I would say that uh, uh, that's going to be like we are going to bounce back even with the yeah. With yeah. Euros. No, my point was to the average person that doesn't pay attention. Like, like year to year, just... mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I agree. They like don't know any of year, this. This was yeah. a bad year. And I can add to this, I can uh, follow with my uh, with my article, Inflation in the Europe, uh, just a little, just a few information. Uh, you know, I live in the Europe and in a country that uses Euro as a, as a native currency. We abandoned the small currency of this country. Uh, like 14 years ago so it impacts directly me but still like europe is a formidable economy in a macro scale worldwide so it's also important to keep an eye on what's happening in the europe and with the inflation in europe and um, and also for the crypto like yes the us is more important also most of the trading is happening in the us but uh, europe i think follows so um so the the inflation is higher than in the US uh, at the moment the euro the eurozone has a 10% inflation I also added this in information of CPI CPI is a core consumer price index is also a 10% and that's the index of how much like uh, goods goods and services that for the consumers have gone up uh, like uh, like at the moment like I think year to year I believe so that it's also so is that an average of all the different countries and weighted like this is in the eurozone yeah in the like in average of the eurozone yeah right and that would include your country mm -hmm. it would and have, have you noticed just uh anecdotally have you noticed prices going up in your local supermarkets uh -huh. yes i have uh, i have it, what 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 in particular did you notice uh or is there anything in particular? Uh, even the, the the bread rolls that I buy for the breakfast sometimes, like I remember, like they used to be sixty five cents, now they're eighty cents. Right. So that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but uh, some things did not go, uh, you know, uh, as much high. But but uh, this was just, yeah. I everybody can can kind of see that. Yes, that's true. And for me, yeah, um, I I or so I live in I live in Japan. And I order from Costco, which is an American product company. Okay. And I order things like coffee, bulk coffee and things. Okay. And I, I have the same order okay. every <laughs> every two months, right? I'll yeah. order. And and yeah. it was I suddenly looked at the price and it was super high. And I said, Oh, I must have it must have been I ordered too much. <laughs> okay. And I realized twice. it wasn't it, I it was my thirty percent higher. Yeah. I thought I had so I was ordering exactly the same goods because it's the same order every time and I thought I'd hit a wrong button uh but <laughs> dif the difference See. was the US dollar JPY exchange rate okay so interesting uh, yeah here is the chart of each country I think this is the whole eurozone I right okay believe. okay so this is the weighted average that's just what you were asking and my country is unfortunately in oh, the wow. second half however i was surprised to learn that the czech republic has even higher wow 17 percent uh, higher inflation and czech republic is the is the country that uh, is kind of closest to mine in all ways cultural way as well I and mean, we used to be one country in the past the relationships are still kind of like a 
sibling competitions kind of stuff. Crazy so, numbers. So and they kept their currency, they kept the Czech crowns. So Slovakia accepted euros 14 years ago. And um and also uh just a little bit just uh to follow with my findings of what the European Central Bank is going to do or does because you all the time we talk about the Fed so now you know let's talk about the same like what the European Central Bank does mm. so they expect given the rhetoric they they uh, have had they expect to raise the rates higher but not necessarily in the upcoming months because it is becoming clear that relentless monetary policy will end up breaking something and that's right. also what we speak about the US as well and what you say all the time. So the same worries are in Europe. So the Europe, including the Canada and Australia, are starting to weigh the pros and cons of calibrating monetary policy with a single objective, bringing inflation down to 2%. This objective is like, uh, I'm not sure even if it's realistic to bring it down to 2%, but I think maybe it's for the motivational purposes. It's good if you put yourself objectives like just beyond the border of possible right just don't get frustrated too much if you don't reach uh, but this objective is too ambitious i think but still they are beginning to consider the slowdown in the pace of hikes and most likely complete pause relatively soon so complete pause could be for the rest of this year and uh, maybe maybe even even the month of 2023 who knows um but so the overall situation to sum up so the inflation is very high it's it's like 10 mm, percent and crazy. still there is a talk and about the pause of the of the rates so this is like very interesting like like it's like the european central bank ecb like hopes that the inflation peaks for now and that they can post the hikes and that uh because it's lagging indicator and that it's gonna show that it's falling down so yeah it's like yeah, they, they're, they're hoping. hoping for that and yeah that yeah. would be the inflation in europe and remember this is what the governments are reporting because governments have been notoriously under reporting inflation right mm -hmm. like they don't include certain things and a lot of people that follow these rates have been saying they've been lying for many years and reporting it lower than that's a what good it point. Was. That's an excellent now, point. this is this is what the government's admitting. So you could it argue it might even be lower. higher than these numbers, right? right? Well, the the bread rolls went up that I keep buying. What is this? Fifteen cents, so twenty percent. It's uh, from sixty-five cents to eighty cents, so that's fifteen cents. So that's like twenty percent. It's actually above. It's twenty-two percent out of top of my head. Right, right. So right. that's my personal experience, like twenty two percent increase in a grocery right. store. Right. So who and, knows? Uh, it might be really double, just like you say. Correlated to that is bonds have failed. Um and then you say, Well, you know, if those if those become unpopular, if people no longer want to hold cash, mm -hmm. yet cash, and they don't want to hold bonds, where is that money gonna go? And I think that's the theme for 2023 and 2024 that we can talk mm. about in the future. In 2025 is, even. Well, or forever. I mean, once bonds Six. fail, do they ever come back? Right? Once, you know. So um, uh, where do you go? There's not there's not many places to go. Yeah, so. I know. Where, I know what you want to say, where they will all go. I know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just... The question is more important than the answer, hey, I think. Bitcoin? Question... <laughs> Dogecoin's pumping. Maybe it goes oh, to Dogecoin. Oh, we haven't talked about that. That's a, before we wrap this up. We have to talk about it, guys. This is Doge... just thankfully that you reminded me, Curtis. Well, thankfully. Elon owns Twitter now, so thankfully you reminded the, me. How could I not pumper. mention? So, guys, uh, this is very, very important to pay attention. Maybe this is where all the Germans put their money. <laughs> So this is very important to pay attention because um, we've seen. I have a I have a short chart here. We've seen Doge USD. Maybe uh, let's put like Bittrex should have a very long chart. Yes, Bittrex never disappoints. So this is very important to to see because this reminds me just a little bit what happened in like 
December 2020. In two weeks, Doge back then pumped 330%. Right. And that was like a, kind of a mm, indication that there is seriously going to be some kind of a breakout of all time highs and some kind of a very bullish wave, which then came in Q1 and partially in Q2 in 2021. Right. So right now, okay, it's not 333%, but in one single week, the Doge has literally gone 150%, which is just right. a half. And these pumps are not unnoticed. They they always kind of uh, bring some kind of new money or some, some money then to come back to crypto when this happens. Right, right. So when I saw yesterday that it literally touched 15 cents, even though it is from because of the Twitter news, but regardless of the news, when Doge goes, all the meme coin goes, go like Floki mm. Inu. Floki Inu is on my short list. It also Floki Inu has yeah. gone this week. Floki, I never... Yeah, the, the Elon Musk dog, you know. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of money in stable coins and uh, it's probably they want to come back to crypto. They don't want to go to out of the crypto market. And also on the uh, Bitcoin uh, contract, Doge has literally retested the high from August 2021. So this right. is like surreal. It is big and right. it is big for altcoins, first of all. And also uh, even past merge, um, because, because I was obviously wrong with the uh, breaking down of the wedge, we did not go we did not break down the yearly lows so we i i drew this level back in january 2021 and look how this level is important today mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. this is a this is two years old drawing area two years old area and look how important it is today so that's why i don't delete these lines because we yeah now and look at that. And this is actually now when you look at this, this is like such a perfect bullish retest. And this, uh, this on the, then it suggests new, um, that Ethereum should actually go even higher than it was in the summer. And one more thing on, on Bitcoin contract, on Bitcoin contract, it also looks kind of pristine. Do you like but, Ethereum right now? At 1600, you like it? Mm, I don't necessarily like it past merge, no, but I'm just saying that the charts look pristine. The charts disagree with me. The charts look, look pristine and this chart even more because like this structure that we are looking at, that the middle part of the structure, which the middle part is always like the most important and right. it was perfectly held. And this might even suggest that this is going to make uh, like a couple of years uh, high uh on the bitcoin contract this is ethereum slash bitcoin and right. then the next target would be literally about 0 0.1 so kind of a i think altcoins uh might have a good time and, and bitcoin dominance might drop again so my call of bitcoin dominance going up might come later so so what do you think are we going to get a pump here before the end of the year in the whole crypto market uh in the whole crypto market i'm not sure but in the altcoins everything is positioned like it's very likely that we will and we are already uh, we already are having by the way for the altcoins we are already having uh, lots of money but you'd have to include bitcoin and ethereum well ethereum um i would say it's likely yeah but from this position i would say it's likely that yes between now and december it's right now it's almost it's it's november 1st um on tuesday right so or on yeah tuesday is november 1st so we've got 60 days to the end of the year it seems like it's mostly going to be upside in crypto no uh could be could be uh i think it's likely and unfortunately we have to wrap this up so thank you very much curtis and uh, okay. see you again bye